This is the Voyager record, the iconic golden record that was sent on both the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 spacecraft in 1977. These were sent on board both spacecraft in the hopes that if aliens were to stumble upon these records, they could know about our existence. On the Voyager record are these sets of lines. What do they show? They show where Earth is in the galaxy and uses a map of pulsars and a cryptic code which, when deciphered, gives the position of Earth. But what if I told you that these pulsars can help us detect gravitational waves, an interstellar-wide gravitational wave detector? Now that's science. To understand how pulsars are being used to detect gravitational waves, it's important to understand what makes pulsars the best objects to observe for this kind of job. The short answer is essentially a pulsar is a rapidly rotating, highly magnetized neutron star. That's Dr. Andrew Cameron, and if you want to see our deep dive into pulsars, just click the playlist you see in the description below. You can see on the diagram on the right, you know, what a model of one looks like. You've got the neutron star there as that blue ball in the center. It's surrounded by a, you know, reasonably strong magnetic field. We're talking on the order of 10 million times stronger than the Earth's magnetic field. And then you've got the blue axis showing where the magnetic north and south pole is. And from those poles, you get these beams of electromagnetic radiation. As these beams sweep the sky, they can sometimes point towards Earth, which astronomers detect as a pulse. A typical analogy used to describe pulsars is thinking of pulsars as lighthouses, but in this video, it's better to think of pulsars as clocks. Every time astronomers detect a pulse, it is analogous to a tick on a clock. Tick, tock, tick. In fact, some pulsars, called millisecond pulsars, are so precise in the regularity of their pulses that they are comparable to the accuracy of the most precise clocks in the world, called atomic clocks. Currently, atomic clocks are used in some of the most precise gravitational wave detectors, such as LIGO and potential future detectors like NEMO. There's a video about that in the description below. However, Researchers began to see the possibility of using pulsars, these cosmic clocks, to detect gravitational waves. But why such precision in time? Well, as I mentioned in my previous video, to detect gravitational waves, you need to detect the squishing and stretching effects of the 4km LIGO arms. You can measure that stretching and squishing effect by measuring the change in time the light takes to go back and forth one of the perpendicular tunnels. The same logic can be applied to pulsars, since we know that pulses should be arriving at an extremely precise, predictable time, we can measure a change in the time between pulses to detect a squishing and stretching effect of the space between the pulsar and Earth. But we don't just want to do this for one pulsar. Instead, we'd like to do this for many pulsars, ideally pulsars that fit a certain criteria, measuring them on a regular basis. Since the types of gravitational waves astronomers will be detecting using pulsars will be incredibly weak and long duration waves, they are instead targeting for something else. They want to use pulsars to detect the cosmic background of gravitational waves, also known as the gravitational wave background. The gravitational wave background is very similar to the cosmic microwave background. It's just that instead of detecting all the microwave light rays from across the whole universe, we're instead detecting the symphony of all the gravitational waves across the whole observable universe. To detect this gravitational wave background, astronomers have predicted what the change in pulse arrival times should be over the course of days and months, and this idealized case for a gravitational wave background is what we call the Hellings and Downs curve. If, with many pulsars, astronomers detect such a curve in their data, then they would have detected the gravitational wave background for the first time. 
From here, astronomers would then want to understand more about the gravitational wave background, such as mapping it out in more detail and a lot more. This is literally uncharted territory. But we haven't detected anything yet, and there are a variety of initiatives that are already on the lookout for this gravitational wave background. The first is the International Pulsar Timing Array, followed by the Meerkat Pulsar Timing Array, the Parks Pulsar Timing Array, the Utmost Pulsar Timing Array, and many more. Through gravitational waves, we're understanding more about the origins of our universe, solving the biggest problem in cosmology, learning more about the objects that made these gravitational waves, and so much more. Who knows what we'll uncover once we detect the gravitational wave background. One other major area astronomers are hoping to discover is trying to find life on other planets. To learn about how that might happen in the future, just click the video you see on your screen. Goodbye.